Hello everyone, John's Tech here. You won't know this, but recently I've been using DaVinci Resolve instead of Premiere and I've been really enjoying it. So I've been trying to create some presets that save me a lot of time. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create your own custom shelf with your own custom effects. I'm gonna show you how to create this effect here. And it's really easy to assign this effect to your clips. So you'll see you have a shelf down here. You'll have your effect here, which if you slide your mouse over, you can visually see what it's doing drag and drop that into your clips and it does this effect. Then on the top right you'll have your effects and you'll have all the exposed parameters you'll want to use. Shadow strength, uh, the width, height, corner radius, change the color of the border. Maybe you don't even want the border, you can turn that off there. Easy, really easy to do. I'll also show you how to link nodes together so they can reference each other's values. For the people that don't have enough time to watch the full video, I can put down a script in the description which you can simply just copy like this and then paste and you'll create a little node in your fusion editor you can then just shift and drag that onto this which will create the same same effect that we're creating today the only issue with doing this is you'll be stuck with these parameters and you won't be able to customize it to what you want to be you'll just be stuck with these settings that i have chosen so I'd recommend following along the full video so you can understand how it works and to choose which parameters you want. In the end, it will look something similar to this. And this is great because you can adjust every single thing in here. You can choose which properties you want to expose. So you can have that conveniently on that one effect and you can adjust all of these parameters in one little area. Right, to get started then, we have our clip here in the editor select that and go to fusion the first thing we want to do here then is we want to add in a node so control and spacebar will pop up your select tool type in rectangle create a rectangle now what you can do is attach this to the media in and this will allow you to change the corners directly on the media in but you don't want to do this because when you finally export this and use it as an effect when you add it, you'll create multiple media ins. And I find that quite tacky. I'm not sure if it'll have performance issues, but you'll have two of these media ins and I don't think you need that. So the best thing I found to fix that is to actually create a brightness and contrast. Turn on the alpha, set the gain to zero, settings and apply the mask inverted. Now attach the rectangle to the brightness contrast the media into the brightness contrast and the brightness contrast out into the media out. There we go. Look at that looking beautiful. Let's change this. We should rename these as well. So they make more sense. They're not just rectangles and brightness. It'll help us in the future. So this rectangle is what we're using to round the mask. So let's call it a round mask. Then the brightness and contrast is the mask. So let's call it mask brightness contrast. Fantastic. Next, we'll want to create a merge node. Merge. If you press shift and left click and drag, you can actually attach it directly onto the line, which is easy. So let's do that. Let's create a border color, which is just a background. So control space REN, background. Attach that to the background. And now you can see it's actually made our media black. That's because this background is in the foreground, but we want it in the background. So let's undo that. What you can do is Alt, right click uh, and drag on this square at the end here, the blue port onto merge, and you can set it as background. Then on the mask, do the same thing. Alt, left click, drag onto the merge node and set it as the foreground. Now our background is behind, which is what we want. Leave the merge as merge. Let's change this to border color. We'll create another rectangle. So control space bar rectangle. We have a nice little rectangle here. Perfect. And you can see now that's all matched up lovely. What we want to do as well, actually let's rename this first. So border. What we want to do is link these up. So when we change the corner round radius and the height and width, we want these both to adjust. What you can do is select the border size, pin it, 
select the round mask, and now we can visually see both of these components open here. We want to connect the round mask to the border size because we will just use the border size to control everything. So you want to right click on the round mask width and then select expression, the same with the height and with the corner radius. And you get a nice little plus here. So click and drag that width onto the width of the border size. Same with the height and the radius. And now they basically, and now we basically can just use the border size to control both of these effects at once. Let's set something nice. So point two is good. Keep this. Actually, we want to set this to 0.95 because when we add the border to it, it'll be on the outside. And if it's at the full size, we'll, we won't see the border. So let's set that to 0 0.5. 0.95 sorry and we have this slightly imperfect next thing to do control space let's add the transforms so transform shift click drag and attach the line oh yeah we can open this now we don't we don't need the border pinned anymore there you go perfect okay now we have a transform we can use this to control where the position is so look the size here we'll use this to change the size and then you can reposition to maybe the corner if you want your face cam to be in the bottom left cool let's put this back to the middle just so you can see better what i'm doing and i'll keep it a large size but you can position it wherever you want just going to set it to eight or something cool fantastic right now we need to add our border so our border color was here Let's go back to the border size. We can actually change the border width here. And you can see we have a nice little border width. Go to the border color, change the color. There you go. Let's set that to, let's make it white. There you go. Now we have the border color working on our lovely little clip here. The border size again, just showing you. You can set that to whatever you want. Fantastic. Now I think we've pretty much done most of it. Oh yeah, and the drop shadow. Okay, cool, let's add this drop shadow in. Control shift, I can drop shadow, I'll give us a little drop shadow shift, left click and drag on, and now we've added our drop shadow. Super, super easy. How simple and easy is that to set up? It might look confusing at first, but hopefully I've explained that well. You just, you can see your input, it starts here, and then it kind of goes along these little arrows to your media out. This is the final result. This is what we put in, and these are the effects we add along the way. But this is nice having all these nodes because you can see exactly what you're doing. And if you rename it properly, you can see exactly which ones to go to to edit. Let's change the drop shadow just so it's more similar drop shadow. Let's change this to transforms. Oh, and the way I'm changing the text is you just press F2 and it'll rename. There you go. That's looking pretty good. All right. Let's position this into somewhere we want it to be by default. So everything we set it now will be the default settings when you assign this clip. I quite like it. Yes, Could you try again? Oh, shut up Siri. Right, I quite like it it's a bit smaller, so let's make it there. Yeah, that looks good to me. Fantastic, right now, we want to save this to our own custom shelf. And the way to do that is you want to select everything apart from the media in. So it's all selected. Right click on any of the nodes. Go to macro, create macro. Now in here, we'll have access to all of the nodes and you can choose which things you want to be exposed to our effect. By that, I mean which ones we can edit when we add the effect to a clip in the future. You can click off anything now, select the shadow. I'm gonna select the shadow here to see what parameters are here and what ones I might want. Okay, so I probably want the shadow strength, the drop angle and the drop distance and the color and blur. Okay, controls, right. Shadow strength, yes. Angle, distance, blur. And do I want to change the color? No, I don't wanna change the color. I think it's fine. 
black. I don't really want to change it, but if you want to change the color, you can turn some other ones on. This is why it's good you following along because you can turn on which parameters you want to change later on. Cool, transforms. This will be this one, so we can move it around and control where it is on the screen. Um, the center, don't want to worry about the pivot. And the size. I'd quite be interesting if I wanted to flip it. Yeah, so I'm going to turn the flips. That's it for now. We also want to get the border size here. So the border size, remember we've connected it to the mask, so it controls a bunch of other things, which is great. Let's go to the border size. And we want to change the level. This is what you want to do to control the opacity of it. If I select this here, you can see changing the level actually reduces the opacity of the border. You can change the alpha on the border color, but it does it in a weird gradient. Can you see this? It's like only reducing the bottom right. I'm not sure if there's a bug or anything, but it's better just to change the level on the border size here. So right, cool. We have that selected. Yeah, we want the level to come through. The border width. Yeah, that's the border. Let's choose the border width. Border width is this. Select that. We also want the width and height and the corner radius. So the corner radius, width and height. Perfect. Can this be set to one? No. If we set this to one, you can see we're having the issue where it's not properly displaying the border. So what we can do is I think 995, so 0.95 is actually pretty good. So you can see everything's working there. What we can do is we can actually set the max that it can go to is 0.95. So we can't technically break it when we add the effect to our clips in the future. That will do for now. I might have missed a few things, but you can go through and add everything you'd like. But just for the sake of this tutorial, that's what we'll do for now. Okay. So let's go YouTube rounded frame. That would be a good name for now. Right, cool. Save as, three dots at the top, click those, save as, and it'll take you to this macro folder. So you can just save that here, save. And if we actually go to it in our Explorer, you can see it's saved in here. By saving it in here, what it does is it actually allows us to recreate this node in Fusion. By that, I, we can close that now, we don't need that. By that, I mean when you press Control Space, YouTube, it will be in your select tool, which means you can just add it in here. But we don't want to add it in here, we want to add it to our newly created effects panel in the editor. This, what you need to do is you go up actually first of all copy this so Control c copying it go up one go to templates edit effects and you can create a new shelf here so i'll just call it youtube for this video here go into that and then paste you can see it's popped up already on the bottom left here click on that and we now have this frame here. It's glitching out there because we've already applied it. Right, so let's remove this effect so we can add it back on. I don't need any of these anymore. Assign that. So it's just now, we just have the video clip with no effects on it. And if we select our effect here, drag it on, boom! It's in the bottom left, just like we set up. And now, if we go to the effects, this is everything that we wanted to export when we created the macro. So these are all the parameters we can adjust. And remember we set the maximum limit on the border width and height to 0.95. There you go. So you can't actually break it and go past. We could have set it to be a minimum of a certain amount as well. But for this example, I think it's fine. Here you go. Control the level of that, the border width. How fantastic is that? There you go, now I've shown you how to create your own custom effect shelf, how to create this effect in Fusion, how to save it, how to link nodes, how to expose the particular parameters you want to edit. I think that pretty much covers everything. I'm not sure if there's anything else I missed. If there is, I'll probably add it in the description. If you like this video, let me know. 
you want to see any more features or things I can make for you, just let me know in the description and I'll make a tutorial on how to do it. But other than that, thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon in another video. Take care. Bye.